Hi friends and welcome back to Coffee with My Sunshine. Today I am creating some dupes or just recreating some items that I've seen at stores or online that I really really like for my home but are just out of my budget and just creating them for less. So if you're interested in seeing that, let's get started. This first one, I am going to be using some scrap wood that I already had on hand, um, but this would be easy to get at Home Depot or whatever. My piece is eight inches wide, so I'm going to cut it at eight inches, so it's eight inches wide, eight inches long. <clears throat> and this is going to be for our outdoor lantern. I'm gonna make two of them, um, different styles. And this is super easy to do. I just used a handsaw. You can use your power tools, whatever you have. Um, using a handsaw just takes a little bit more time and you get a little bit more exercise. <laughs> so for this first one, you just need two of these eight inch squares, one for the top, one for the bottom. And they are about an inch thick. So I wanted my lantern to stand about um, 24 inches or two feet tall. So I'm going to cut my posts. And these were home, from Home Depot. They, I can't remember the length. I'll have to put it up in, or I'll just put it in the description box. But they were about $3.96 a piece, super affordable. Um, but I'm going to cut these ones at 22 inches long. And that way when I put the top and the bottom on, it will be 24 inches total. This is going to be a really tall lantern. Um, that way you can put, um, you know, like tall candles or plants or whatever in there that you want. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to cut the ones, the um, posts for the shorter lantern. And I'm going to make those about 11 inches. My um, base for the shorter lantern the top and the bottom are a little bit thicker. I think they were an inch and a half. So I just, you know, I just kind of guessed at what size I wanted the little short stubby one. And this is all you'll need for the two lanterns besides glue and some nails or screws. Super simple, can all be done with a handsaw. And this is all I'm going to be using for the tall one. I'm just using this wood glue. This is probably my favorite kind. I've used um, Gorilla Wood Glue. I've used all types. They're all pretty good. I guess there isn't really much of a difference that I've noticed. Um, but I originally thought I could do this on my own, which you totally could. Um, it just takes a little bit longer. Um, but I asked my husband to help me. So I first put the wood glue on and then I'm going to attach the base. And I'm using screws. We ended up using longer screws after this because they just were a little bit too short. And you don't really need them with the wood glue it's to hold it in place while it dries. Apologize for the wind noise, it was so windy today. <laughs> Once the wood glue dries, it's really, really solid. And it's not like you're going to be whipping these around or anything. They're just going to be sitting on your porch or on your outside table, or they can be brought inside too. I just wanted to make them for outdoors. So then here you can kind of see how wobbly the legs are and it's only because the wood glue isn't dried. Um, like I said, we went back in and put the longer screws in. It's not necessary, my husband said. This. He said the wood glue would be great as long as you um, let it dry completely. I like these because they're really rustic and if you're new to my channel the um, these bases are um, barn wood from my parents property we took down a horse barn that they had so we've had this barn wood forever and this little one we're just putting together the same way with wood glue and we're using the longer nails this time 
and just attaching them the posts at um, each of the four corners. Oh, we're on a time crunch. <laughs> <laughs> I love working with you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're such a good team. <laughs> Do you want to put it on the board or no? Uh, right there is good because the board's crooked, so I want to make sure you get that one tight first. Good. Yep. <laughs> that was dramatic. Yeah, that was pretty dramatic. <laughs> I was a little bit frightened. <laughs> okay, was that my thumb? <laughs> my shock. <laughs> And I thought these would be really cool to decorate in, you know, the, the winter with pretty candles, maybe outdoor candles or um, solar lights. I don't know about putting real flames. I'm sure you can as long as you have like, you know, kind of like a longer, um, maybe glass votive around it or something. Or if you put like a regular size candle into the taller lantern, I'm not sure. Whatever you want to do, whatever you feel safe with. If you're going to be around it, it's probably not a problem to have a regular candle in there. So for the longer screws, we ended up pre-drilling um, just so that the screw was guided in the right direction and it didn't go in all wonky and all crooked because um, we didn't want to split the wood or anything. So that's why we're pre-drilling with the longer screws. And with the barn wood, I think it's cool because I can flip it if I want and have, you know, the grayer side up. Or I can flip it and have the, you know, the more wood color, which is what I'm going to start with. We'll see if I get bored with it and want to change it up. And then... Because I thought the lanterns were a little bit boring without something on the top, you could put even like a rope handle like my other lantern. I'll um, put up a picture here in the corner of one of my other lanterns I've done. You know, I love doing lanterns. <laughs> um, but anyways, I just wanted to cut a little topper for the top of both of the lanterns just to give it a little bit more... Um, I don't know, a little bit more something to look at, a little bit more dimension because they just kind of look boxy to me. And I am using this, <laughs> this wood stain. It's actually a deck stain. I've used it on, um, we used it on our deck and we used it on our deck furniture. If you remember last summer, I think it was, our deck furniture is in really good shape. It's just really, really dried out. So this worked great for that. It just, it only took, I think one, I think I only ended up doing one coat on the furniture and one coat on the deck too so and it seems to be holding up okay it's only been like a month so i have no idea how long it holds up so i thought it would work great on this lantern anyway and i will link the color in my description box as well and i'm only going to do the posts i thought about staining it but with the two different types of wood i knew it wouldn't end up um, looking the same, I guess, the post and the top and the bottom. So I thought I would just make it two-toned. If I want, I can go ahead and just paint the whole thing this color. Let me know what you would do. And also let me know if you're going to make one. But anyway, I thought they would be cool because you can keep them outside like in the summer and then bring them in in the winter if you want. And if you have a fireplace, you could, you know, decorate them on the fireplace or in your entryway. I just think they're really cool because they can be used inside or outside. And then I'm just painting the top the same color as the posts. I thought that would be really pretty. And I want to say hi to anybody that's new. If you haven't been to my channel before, I would love for you to pop in the comments and say hi. Let me know what type of videos you guys like to see. And if you're liking today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. 
And then I'm just attaching that little topper with wood glue because it's not going to be like a handle or anything. And then I'm doing the same um, look with the taller lantern. And I didn't paint the bottom of this little topper because I wanted to glue it down. And it just holds a little bit better if it's um, right on the wood instead of the painted surface. And here they are all finished. And I styled them a couple different ways for you just so you could see. You could use candles. And these are my favorite candles. They're Antique Candle Company. I always have my link in my description box if you want to check them out. I thought it was really pretty with these flowers in here. Or you could change it up and put, like I was talking about earlier, like the taller like um, glass pillar candles or votive candles. You could even put like a pretty little shell in there for like a coastal feel. I was having fun decorating them. <laughs> but let me know how you would do your lanterns. Would you do them all one color? Would you leave them wood? How would you style them with candles or flowers? But let me know what you think about this one. And for this next one, I saw this on Pottery Barn. I have no idea how much they were, but I love that square garland on that table. So I thought I could easily recreate it. So my husband's helping me here drilling the holes. And I thought at first it would be easier to, you know, drill through the posts. Those are those same posts we use for the lantern. So it's just kind of scrap wood now. <laughs> um, but I thought it would be easier to drill the hole all the way through as much as you could with the drill and then cut a bunch of pieces, but it only went through about one and a half chunks. I'll let you know the size of my squares here. Um, I'll put that in the description box. So I would make a cut and then drill the hole again. So it went through and then make the cut and drill the hole. And that got kind of, I don't know, annoying. <laughs> so we decided I would just make a bunch of the cuts and then we could drill through. My husband did that while I was making the cuts. So I think I was talking through it, but my husband set up just like this little um, template for me with that um, wood piece being held by the clamp there. You can rewind it and see. Um, that way I could just, instead of measuring each piece of wood, I could just keep putting the wood there and then cutting it and it was, they were all going to be the same size. So anyway, when I was done, they were really, really splintery. So I'm just taking some sandpaper and sanding them down, softening them up a little bit. I wanted the edges just a tiny bit rounded so that they weren't sharp. And I'm kind of undecided. Tell me what you think. Would you leave them this raw wood color? Would you stain them or paint them or, you know, make them alternating colors? Let me know what you think. Because I'm not really sure what I want to do yet. So I just left them the natural color so you could kind of see if you wanted to do your own what they would look like. So then I'm just taking this rope or twine and that's what I'm going to use for mine and also this nautical rope. This is going to be for the end pieces because obviously I couldn't fit that through the wood pieces. <laughs> so I'm just starting by um, threading this thinner rope through. So 
So let me know, how do you guys decorate for like outdoor get togethers or how do you just decorate your outdoors? Do you just use flowers or do you, th you, or do you use things like the lantern and stuff like that? I just, I like to hear what other people do. And if you're interested, I just did a bird feeder, bird bath um, video. It just went up, I think last week. If you like that kind of thing, I have another couple ideas for um, bird baths and I think one other bird feeder. Um, I also have um, an outdoor game video that we just did. It was cornhole and um, like the giant tumbling block games for outdoors. So if you like that kind of thing, check that out as well. I will have those linked in my description box. So after you're done threading on the blocks, just kind of loosen it up because you don't want it super tight when you put the end pieces on. You want to be able to move it and have some space in between the blocks. So I'm just taking that nautical rope and I'm going to cut a chunk off. You want it kind of long here if you want it to look like um, the pottery barn picture. Sorry about my phone. If you can hear it, it keeps going off. <laughs> um, so I'm just taking the, the end piece that was sticking out of the twine and I'm going to tie it around the nautical rope. I'm going to knot it twice just so it's really secure and then I'm cutting it where I want the tassels to end. And then you could totally leave it like that. That would be cute, but I'm going to unravel it and fray it. This is super easy to do and I love working with this rope. It's really pretty. And I just took a comb to fray it out and separate the pieces. It took a little bit longer than I thought because I only had a wide tooth comb, but probably um, a smaller comb would work better. So I was just showing you kind of how I did the tassel after I tied it on. I just separated some pieces of the nautical rope, just little chunks, and wrapped it around itself so that it looked more like a tassel, and then tied it. Um, I think I double knotted it in the back. And then this is what it looks like all finished. Let me know if you would stain it or paint it, but I think it's really pretty as is. And for this next one, I am just using this pickle jar because I thought it was really cool. It's just giant. Um, and here is the inspiration piece from Pottery Barn. It's not going to look exactly the same, but that's the beauty of creating dupes or making things for less because you can style it more towards your style instead of just what the store has. Um, so I'm taking this pickle jar and this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. This one's going to be super simple and also some sand. You can get sand at Home Depot, um, I think any hardware store really for super cheap. And I'm just going to take this nautical rope and wrap it around the jar a couple times and secure it with this hot glue. I know they're using like a really pretty, it looks like a rope or maybe like um, one of those smooth, um, it's not called twine, what is it called? You know what I'm talking about. But theirs is a little bit different than I wanted. I wanted mine to be more of like a nautical look. We have our sunroom. As, uh, it has like a beach theme to it but I thought this would be really pretty outside and then I could bring it in in the winter so I'm just taking the nautical rope and wrapping it around the jar securing it with some hot glue making sure the end is tucked in nicely Thank <laughs> you. 
and you're all set. If you didn't want it to have like the jar look, you could wrap some of the rope or twine around the top and then you wouldn't see, you know, where you would thread on the lid. But that's totally up to you. And I'm adding some of that really pretty sand. It just kind of gives it like a beachy feel. And then adding in a candle. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed these dupes or look for less type projects. They were really easy to do on a budget. Let me know what you want to see next. I hope you're having a great day so far. Thank you all so much for watching and for all your love and support. I'm sending you love and hugs and I'll see you next time. Bye.